The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild is an innovative game with many unique systems. One that I personally loved was their cooking system. It revolves around collecting different ingredients and then combining them to produce dishes of varying potency. Now, I'm currently working on a game in Unity called Tavern Team, which revolves around running a medieval tavern with your friends, and I need a cooking system for my players. So I decided to recreate the mechanics of Breath of the Wild from selecting ingredients to combining them in a pot, and I created a recipe system for those ingredients to combine into dishes. So without further ado, let's get started. So the first thing I wanted to tackle was the layout of the UI. I took a screenshot from the game and used that as a guide for positioning the item icons. I then created a prefab to repeat for each separate item and set a nice darker gray background color to try to match how they look in the game. Now you'll notice in game that the background is blurred a little bit. So to recreate the effect in Unity, I added post-processing. Now I'm using the universal render pipeline. So to do this, I added a depth of field effect and then set the focal distance very close. So this blurs out the background in a manner similar to the game. The next step was to create some icons for our ingredients. Now in game, they're pretty standardized with light hitting them from a singular directional angle. So to do this, I dug up some old code that I'd written previously to generate screenshots. I modified this a little bit and now I'm running a script that will set each ingredient's prefab active. Then the code takes a screenshot and saves it as a PNG. Now this works super well and it saves them all as cutouts with no background. And if you want to use this script, I'm just going to throw it up on my GitHub uh, link down below. It's not perfect, but you can probably figure out how it works and get it to work for you. The next step was to add a cursor effect to the UI. So now we can see in game that there's four little triangles that follow your cursor around. So I cracked open GIMP and created one that looked similar and dragged it into Unity. I added a little growing animation so it pulses up and down and this is going to play on repeat. So after that, here's how it looks in game. I also added some bloom to my UI to add that little bit of glow sort of outline that you see in Breath of the Wild. I then added a fade effect to the outline of the buttons so that once your cursor leaves them, they slowly transition back to their darker normal state. Next, I want to tackle adding an in-game character to display what you're holding. In Breath of the Wild, you can see Zelda holding items as you select them. So to do this, I created a character with the same look as mine and put him in a new little area. I added a camera to capture him and set the output of the camera to a render texture. Now this render texture I dragged onto my UI to display my character when I opened the cooking screen. I then slapped an animator on him. Now, let's talk about the important things in life. Melons. Holding. Melons, of course. I created some placeholder objects that I could store the transforms of, and I positioned them in the arms of my character. So now when I select an ingredient, its prefab is instantiated at one of those placeholder objects. I then hopped over to Mixamo to grab some free animations. I adjusted the positioning of the arm slightly to create multiple animations with different arm lengths. So now I can play animations with wider arms as I add more items. Next, I wanted to give our items a bit of a drop-in effect. You'll notice in-game that the items don't just spawn and then stay static in the same position. They get pushed around a bit by other items and tend to wind up in a more organic manner. To do this, I added rigid bodies to the objects, which at first causes them to just fall to the place where all my Unity prototypes go. But to prevent this, I created a little bin on the character to hold the items. I spent some time finagling with the settings to allow them to rotate briefly and then freeze them in place. And I got it to a state that I'm pretty happy with. Looking back over the UI, I wanted to add a fade effect to the side panels like how Breath of the Wild does. And after wasting an entire day trying to get this effect to work, I wound up using this UI blur shader to fade it from left to right or right to left depending on where it's positioned. Using a little bit of code, I was able to update these fades based on which panel is active. And oh yeah, by the way, I added a second panel so that if you have more than 20 ingredients, it overflows into that. After that, I focused on creating a way to display the descriptions of the items. Now in game, there's this cool text effect where it displays from left to right in a very quick manner. And to recreate this, I followed this excellent tutorial by CodeMonkey. You do this by creating a layer mask that the text only shows 
if it's above. So I created a script to quickly move that layer mask from left to right whenever a new item is highlighted by our cursor, and this displays the description beneath. Now I'm at the point where I want the UI to display only when I'm at the prepare food station. I understand in Breath of the Wild you can pop it up anywhere, but for my game, I want this constraint. After that, I duplicated the prefabs to show up not only on your character render, but also on your in-game character so that you can see them down by your hands. How, how the f Once I was able to get that working, you can now see how they show up in your hands as you move around. I then spent some time to redo my old cooking station that was previously just a pot, but I needed to spice it up a little bit to have it work in this tavern setting. And that is what the finished product looks like. I added a little hood to take the heat out of the tavern, and also added a little smoke effect to the pot. Pretty happy with it. I then updated the items to be moved from your hands to the cooking pot when you click on it. I cleaned this up a little bit later, but for now it's just a quick teleport. I then jumped back over to my screenshot generator and created some images of plates for our dishes to sit on. Now, my ingredient combination system works a little bit differently than Breath of the Wilds. Here's my issue. There are a lot of recipes. I mean like a lot, a lot. And unfortunately, I can't make several dozen recipe outputs. Um, I'd have to make prefabs for them and screenshots, so I'm gonna have to narrow it down a bit. I created a system that uses major and minor ingredients. When they get thrown into the pot, it checks to see if any main ingredients are present. If there's none, then it just combines to form this mysterious substance that's served in cafeterias across America. But if it does find a main ingredient, it'll check for recipes that use that. Once it finds a recipe, it'll check the other ingredients in that recipe and compare it to what I threw into the pot. I then assign a score for how close the ingredients I threw in match the recipe, and for each ingredient that matches, I get one star. So in this example, I threw in three of the correct ingredients, thus I'm going to get a three star ribs recipe. I'm really happy with the way this turned out, and although it is a little simpler than Breath of the Wilds, I think it still allows the players to experiment to try to match different combinations to get the best recipe outputs they can. I also added an animation for the player to move his arms forward like he's tossing the ingredients into the pot, and I added a smoother path for the ingredients instead of just teleporting into the pot. They now have little animations to bounce up and down, and I randomly offset them from each other. I need to add a little puff of smoke once the ingredients are done cooking. Uh, in game, it's just a little dark cloud with some sparkles, so I tried to recreate that using the particle system, and oh my god, that is... That is way too much. It looks, you know what? You know what, it looks so stupid, I love it. I'm still gonna make a few more alterations to the menu to make it a little bit more uh, tavern themed, but we got the entire process from start to finish completed and I'm very happy with how this went. If you enjoyed the video, I'd really appreciate a like. Uh, as a smaller channel, it does actually make a pretty huge impact, and if you want to see more content from this game, you can consider subscribing or join the Discord. I post screenshots of what I'm working on pretty frequently down there, and uh, we also have a Game Ideas channel where a lot of people have been throwing out some pretty good suggestions, and I might do a video in the future trying to implement some of those. So, link to the Discord's down below, but I'm going to wrap it up here, so thank you very much for taking the time to watch, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.